Tupac Shakur is a music legend. And for a long time, this community and worldwide have been wanting justice for Tupac. Today, we are taking that first step. Now for what's trending in true crime, the trial date for the man accused of murdering beloved rapper Tupac Shakur has been postponed. The case that was set for June is now set to begin on November the 4th. The defendant is that guy right there, Dwayne Keefe D. Davis, and he retained a new attorney, Carl E.G. Arnold. Now this ruling will give attorney Arnold some more time to familiarize himself with the case evidence. And by the way, Arnold is the third attorney to represent Davis so far. So our question for our power panel, what does this delay mean for both sides of the case? Let's bring in our guests now. Still with me, trial attorney and law professor Dante Mills, criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor Michael J. Brown, and law enforcement expert Sonny Slaughter. Great to have you all with us this morning. Michael, would you start us off, please? What does this mean for both sides of the case? Well, Julie, from a prosecutor's standpoint, as you know, uh, prosecutors want to make the arrest today and try the case tomorrow. The witnesses have memories, they're fresh, they have control of their witnesses, so they always do not uh, want to see a delay. On the flip side, from the defense standpoint, first of all, legally, they have to give the new attorney ample time to review everything, do his due diligence, motion practice, things that he needs to do. But the benefit for the defense is, as time goes on, memories fade, Witnesses maybe get cold feet, especially in, as in this case, uh, potentially the defendant may be out of custody if he post bail. So they may get cold feet, they may disappear, uh, and memories fade. So that's all beneficial to the defense on a, on a situation like this. Yeah, definitely, Michael. Thank you for that. Sonny Slaughter, let me go to you on something, please. The witnesses, the state is concerned about the witnesses, as Keefe D was at one point a very high ranking member of the Crips. Uh, he was a member of the uh, Southside Compton Crips and was uh, a shot caller. He is said to have called the shot uh, in the case of Tupac's murder, as you know. And uh, he still, according to law enforcement prosecutors, has many, many associates uh, who are gang members. And there are many witnesses who are gang members, former gang members, uh, who may be called upon to tell what they know. Uh, the state is worried about their safety. How valid is that concern, please, Sonny? I think it's very valid. Good morning, everyone. We have to consider that, you know, the Crips, and we're talking California, they have very unique styles of engaging uh, potential witnesses and their family members, and the security safety and also recall of individuals becomes very murky and, and not clear when you have these long delays. We need to get them, the witnesses, make sure that they are safe, secure, that their families are safe, secure, because things tend to happen. This is a pretty long delay. And considering that anything can happen and anything is possible, I think that's where we are in this particular case. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it, Sonny. Uh, Dante Mills, let me go to you, please, on something, uh, the, the bond. Uh, so we know that there was a bond reduction, uh, but Keefe D is still being held. And his attorney made a comment that he thinks uh, he'll be able to post soon. And the court is ordering that the validity of the money uh, be checked to make sure that the source isn't the gang. Um, if you're his counsel, would you have a problem with that? Or would you be OK uh, with everything going through the system to make sure uh, the money isn't coming from the Crips? Well, you want to go through the system and make sure everything is done the right way. And generally what happens when someone is requesting bond, uh, and specifically in this case, he's saying, can I uh, post, a, post a certain amount to prove or, or to ensure that I'm going to show up for court? That would allow me to leave the jail, to go home, to work up my case from home, to spend more time with my attorney than I would if I was in jail and he could only come visit me during certain hours, those kind of things. But the prosecutor argued that Keepy D is a threat to the community and he should not be out. His attorney said, listen, he's older, uh, he has health concerns, he's not a 30 or 40 year old gang member, he's an older gentleman. This case happened 30 you know, years ago um, and he's no longer a threat to the community. The judge said that whoever's posting this bond has to show up to say where they're getting this money from, but KPD's attorney is saying they want privacy. They don't want themselves to be, be to become public spectacles 
or their names to be in the news because they put this money up. So they're asking for that to be done in private. And they're saying that's the only thing that's holding him up from posting bond, wondering if the people who are posting on his behalf can do so privately. Mm -hmm. Dante, thank you for all of that. We'll leave Keith E.D.'s case there for now. Of course, we'll let you know if he does make bond. Now, more details we want to share with you are coming out in that big case in Texas involving 11-year-old Audrey Cunningham. The child was found on Tuesday in a nearby river and authorities suspected somebody close to her family from the beginning. Based on all of the evidence that law enforcement has collected, they are in the process of preparing the appropriate arrest warrants for Don Stephen McDougal. At this time, we believe the appropriate arrest warrant is going to be for capital murder in the death of Audrey Cunningham. 41-year-old Don Stephen McDougal, this guy here, uh, is the one who is charged with capital murder, and he is said to be a friend of Audrey's father. What's more, he reportedly lived on the family's property in a trailer there and sometimes took the 11-year-old girl to her school bus stop. Now, Audrey's mother, Cassie Matthews, had this to say on Facebook. Take a look. She said, quote, I'll make this clear one time and one time only. I failed my daughter by being bullied into submission by her father's family and being made to believe that she was in a safe, loving and normal home with her father, end quote. So, so many questions swirling around this case this morning. We're wondering, because of the father's connection to the suspect, should dad be investigated as part of this probe? Or maybe he already is being investigated. Let's bring in our power panel. Uh, Sunny Slaughter, let me start with you on that. You know, we in the public are wondering, have police gone there already to interrogate dad uh, because of this connection uh, to the suspect? But maybe law enforcement's already done that and just haven't told us. Uh, your thoughts, please. Oh, they've absolutely done that. They are investigating, they are looking behind the scenes at not only the relationship between the father and the suspect, but the father, the suspect, and anyone else that was around them. They are looking and already investigating and, and uh, having conversations with people in the neighborhood and even family members. They're going to glean some information from the mom as to what she meant by this post, that she was being bullied, and to determine what, if anything, uh, the father may be culpable of, if not with his daughter's death, outside of some other things that may have taken place between him and this alleged suspect. Mm -hmm. This is horrific. Yeah, it sure is, yeah. Sonny. Uh, and I wonder everything. what... Yes, yes. I, I wonder what dad knew, right? Because we know now it's being reported that this McDougal suspect had a very violent criminal history. Uh, and he also had a conviction for enticing a child in Texas back in 2007. Uh, so uh, he has a checkered past, a past that includes violence. And I want to know why dad was letting him live on the property. Uh, how about you, Dante Mills, your thoughts on that, please? I'm on the other side with this. I believe that it's hard to make anyone responsible for everything that someone else does. We don't know if this father knew about the checkered history as far as enticing a child. Uh, we do know that this suspect uh, does have a recent uh, conviction is actually being held right now um, for uh, some violent behavior and assault or something similar. Uh, but we don't know what the dad knew. And if a friend came to him and showed to be a good friend, uh, apparently he was walking his daughter to school at times or maybe helping around the house and showed no tendencies of this, why would he be held cr criminally responsible for someone who's a horrible person who did something that no one would anticipate a normal person being able to do? Um, so I don't know if we want to continue to walk down that line of blaming people, especially parents, for actions of others because I'm sure that her father is 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 devastated right now. So to add that and somehow try to put the blame on him for not properly betting a friend where that may be impossible to do, that's a that's a very tough task. Mm -hmm. Dante, appreciate appreciate you taking that side of this. And definitely mom is blaming him. I mean, you see the language she used. I was bullied by him, bullied into submission were her words, by Audrey's uh, dad and his family made to think she was in a safe, healthy environment. So I wonder if she had questions too about McDougal. Uh, Michael J. Brown, would you take us home on this case? Uh, give us your thoughts, please. 
I, yeah, Julie, I agree with Dante in the sense that you can't hold everybody responsible for everything. And uh, and I wouldn't pursue the father for the sole sake of, hey, you let your friend live on the on the premises. But, but what I would certainly do, because good policing says, hey, you need to explore every possible suspect. Because a good attorney like Dante, he has a cross-examination and he's crossing uh, the detective on the stand. He wants to make sure that they explore all possibilities and that they have excluded the father for any involvement in this murder. So, yes, they should definitely investigate the father just to rule him out for the purposes of trial and being successful down the road. Right. Appreciate it, Michael. A big thanks to you all. Great discussion on this. We'll leave it there for now, but any more developments on the Audrey Cunningham case, we will share them here on Court TV. Uh, Michael J. Brown and Sonny Slaughter are staying with us. We've got to say goodbye and a big thank you to Professor Dante Mills. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon, Dante. And here's what's coming up next for you on Opening Statements. He was their world. He was their guardian.